Hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome uh, to the End Our Cladding Scandal Wave of Showroom Protest Rally. My name is Tanya Murat. I'm one of the coordinators of the Homes for All campaign and Defend Council Housing. Homes for All is an umbrella organisation of tenants, residents, trade unions and community housing campaigners. We came together in 2016 to fight the housing and planning bill and after that campaign we felt that we should carry on and continue to bring together and amplify the voices of housing campaigners. We've supported campaigns against empty homes, against demolitions of council estates, evictions and planning legislation that increases the unaccountable power of developers. On Tuesday, we'll be marking the fourth anniversary of the Grenfell fire, where 72 people died, caused by a building industry that routinely puts profit before safety and an unaccountable landlord backed by a totally inadequate regulatory regime. Not much of this has actually changed. Instead, there are up to 11 million people still living in buildings that could kill them. But unbelievably, leaseholders who can least afford to pay are being forced to pay thousands to make their buildings safe. We say that developers who've made billions in profits from this system should foot, foot the bill. Since Grenfell, the top five developers have made a collective profit of £10 billion. There is no shortage of cash in the development industry. We're delighted to be hosting this important event alongside our friends in End Our Cladding Scandal, UK Cladding Action Group, and more importantly, the Developer Showroom Protest Group, which first set up this wave of action. We're very excited to be joined by a panel of three fantastic guests in the studio and some very determined people taking action today outside developer showrooms and in city centres. On the call today are Matt Rack, General Secretary of the Fire Brigades Union. Hello, Matt, and welcome. Hello there. Hello, everyone. Uh, Karim Masili from Grenfell United. Hi, Karim. Hi, everybody. And Jenny Garrett um, from End Our Cladding Scandal. Hiya. Thanks for having me. Hi, Jenny. Um, we'll also be showing you a short video by Sarah Rennie from the Cladding Leaseholder Disability Action Group, CLADAG. Sarah will be on a protest today, so she, um, she uh, pre-recorded her comments uh, for us to watch a bit later on. Um, and... Again, very importantly, we'll be linking live to up to 10 protests throughout this rally. So do invite others to join us, share this on social media. Please say hello in the chat and post your comments. If you are part of a campaign, make sure you post the link in the chat as there will be people out there who are keen to get involved. And that's uh, linking in the chat in Facebook and in YouTube. You can raise questions for the panel in the chat as well. We'll be coming back to the panel at, uh, at the end for brief responses if we do have the time. First of all, um, please welcome Jenny Garrett from the End Our Cladding Scandal. You um, were on ITV News yesterday asking a direct question to Robert Gen Jenrick, the Secretary of State for Housing, Communities and Local Government. I wonder, were you satisfied with his answer? And how did we get here today? And what are we hoping to achieve with this wave of protests? Uh, well, thanks very much for having me, Tanya. Um, relating to the, the question that I put to Robert Jenrick through the ITV calendar team, um, I wasn't at all satisfied with his answer, basically because he chose not to really answer it. Um, if anyone didn't see the footage, then um, I essentially put the question to him that my building, I'm in an over 18 metre building where we have issues with the cladding. We are hopeful that we will get Building Safety Fund funding to sort that part of the problem out. But we also have problems like compartmentation um, an insufficient smoke ventilation system. We have missing fire breaks. We have unsafe balconies. Um, and I'm sure a lot of the people that are listening in today will sort of um, concur with that because we know that these problems are affecting buildings all across the country. Um, essentially, Robert Jenrick responded and said that the Building Safety Fund will help help my building and for everything else we need to go to the developer. 
Now, in my particular case, and I know for a lot of people across the country, my developer dissolved themselves as soon as they built the building and sold on the freehold. So that is not um, any form of recourse for me or for the people in my building. And for a lot of people that do have developers that are still in existence, because of the six year limitation law, you know, if your building is over six years, even if your developers are still in existence, it can be very, very hard to get them to do that as well. So one of the reasons why, um, you know, end our cladding scandal and the the other the rest of the kind of campaign and, and everyone that's doing a fantastic job with being out in, in developer protests today is because the government are simply not doing enough to force the developers to pay. We are absolutely clear that this the building safety crisis needs to be paid for by developers we do th therefore realize though that in order to do it at pace and to make sure that people are safe and these homes are made safe as quickly as possible that that money needs to be made up front from the government in terms of you know a, a, a widened scope of the building safety fund so that buildings of all height and fire safety problems of all types can be fixed at pace and then that money needs to be recouped from the polluter the developers who are actually responsible for putting these things in place in the first place so the reason why we're out on the streets today and and are protesting outside of um you know sort of new homes and showrooms and things like that is to make it very clear that we are not uh, accepting that developers are choosing to bury their head in the sand and also a very clear call to the government that they are not doing enough um, you know, we have had countless meetings with MHCLG, the End Our Cladding Scandal team meet with um, the Building Safety Minister, Lord Greenhouse, every single month. And every time we bring this problem up, it's a case of there are developers that are doing the right thing and we are putting immense pressure on them. But we're all on the ground. We're the ones that are living in this nightmare and we know that it's just not enough. There are very, very few developers that have come forward without having any extra pressure exerted on them. And that's exactly the reason why we're out uh, doing this today. Um, so I think just in terms of the, the kind of wider scope of the of the crisis at the moment, what we are campaigning both at government level and, and our protests today against developers, we want to make sure that the upcoming legislation uh, of the Building Safety Bill, which is kind of the next stage on from the Fire Safety Bill that we all work so hard to try and get an amendment uh, put in, um, the Building Safety Bill has essentially an introduction of what's called the building safety charge in its draft form of the legislation and we absolutely want to make sure that the clauses in that legislation that allow a building safety charge to be put on leaseholders will be removed it is absolutely unacceptable that leaseholders who built their home sorry bought their homes in good faith and did all the correct conveyancing checks and things like that were told that their homes were safe it is completely incorrect for us to have to pay to correct the mistakes of the developers who chose to cut corners in order to maximize profits. Um, and so the reason we are protesting today and continuing to pressurize the government is because they absolutely need to do more. And we will not stop until this situation, the building safety crisis is resolved in a comprehensive way and leaseholders are not left footing the bill for any of the costs. Thank you very much. Um, that's excellent. Thank you so much, Jenny. Um, brilliantly, um, brilliantly explained. Yes, absolutely. Developers can and should pay for their own, uh, the own, their own mistakes that they made. Um, we are able to go live to South End, where um, people are protesting uh, about Western homes. Um, South End, go ahead. Yes, hi. Um, we are here at South End in front of Western Homes. We have had lots of interest by, with people. Uh, we've had the police come and say good luck and well done. Um, we're here because we are annoyed about the fire barriers missing from our building, Basildon Morello Quarter. And uh, we're quite a small group at the moment, but we are... Uh, passionate about getting it to work and um, you know making this process protest happen over over the net and so on. Thank you so, so much. For me. Thank sorry, you so much. Sorry, <laughs> oh, sorry, you've just got a picture of my ear now. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. And so um, we will. Western Homes is great. That's right, yes.
That's brilliant. Thank you very much uh, from South End. And um, I can see it's a very lively protest there. Do we have um, Manchester uh, on the line uh, protesting about Bellway? Hi, Tanya. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Go ahead. Hi, so I'm here just north of city centre Manchester. We're about four miles north and we're at the Bellway sales office. And guess what? They knew we were coming. They've seen it on the social media and they've actually shut their sales office for the weekend. So we've done some damage. They know about us. They knew we were coming. And I'm joined here by several leaseholders. We've got a few from Citygate who are a Bellway affected building. We've got Lambert Court here. We've got Hume Life building. We've got several people and they're all extremely angry. They've been here for half an hour and they're about to start their chant now. Bellway must pay, make our home safe. Bellway must pay, make our home safe. Bellway must pay, make our home safe. That's brilliant. Hey, Thanks Bell very Ray, much. We don't like your attitude. Hey, Bellway, rich and rude. We don't like your attitude. Hey, Bellway, rich and rude. We don't like your attitude. Hey, Bellway, rich and rude. We don't like your attitude. So as you can see, there's a lot going on um, and it's going to be like this all afternoon and we've got another protest going on in the city centre, so I'm going to bob off to that one after this. Okay, we'll see you later. You. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, we got all that and we will see you later at the city centre. Um, that was amazing. <laughs> Um, in case you missed that, the chart was, hey, Bellway, rich and rude, we don't like your attitude. And I think that pretty much sums it up really well. Um, our next uh, speaker is uh, Karim Masili from Grenfell United. Um, Karim, you're joining us from your uh, son's football match today, which is why you're in the car. And we're really, really grateful that you could make it. Um it's four years um, from the Grenfell fire on Tuesday. Uh, 72 people dead, survivors like yourself still fighting for justice. Um, what comments have you now and what can we do to support your campaign? Okay, um, so thank you guys for having me. Um, you're absolutely right, four years um, since we lost 72 members of our families and neighbours. Um, as some of you may know, my uncle lived at the top floor of the tower um, and, and had done for some years. And my family had, had lived in the area for a very, very, very long time. Um, and I just want to talk to you guys just about a couple of things. I, I, I remember um, I remember the first night like it was yesterday and the first day like it was yesterday. And walking around the area with, with, with all of the madness that was happening uh, um, and having that, that, that thick, burnt, plasticky smell and everyone talking about cladding. I didn't know anything about cladding. And I've never even heard the word cladding. Didn't even know any, anything about it at, at that time. And, and here we are four years later still, still talking about it. And um, what, we, what, we, what I wanted to talk about is one of, the, one of the main reasons why I think we're still in the mess that we are in today. And through our own um, research, if you will, digging, obsession of... of why the government is failing to take or, or act on the severity of the situation. I mean, I, I, have, I have many reasons. I don't even think they realise the severity of the situation or, or, or they do and they're just trying to hide it. And through this, we've, we, we were able to uncover a culture of, of lobbying, a culture of these uh, individuals from these companies having these cosy relationships with, with the government. Right, and they and, and 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 they hide themselves under these groups called IMA and Bruthmar and Alfred. And some of you might have heard of them, some of you might not, not might not have. And some of these groups, what they do is they have their members are, are, are people like Kingspan, Arconic, Celotex, and they have annual 
if not sort of on a more regular basis, lunches in, in, in the House of Lords and, and in Parliament. And they sit down around the table together and they have whatever conversations they have. And like Brian Martin says it in his in his ridiculous, stupid video that he made 18 months after Grenfell, where he's trying to you know come across as Ricky Gervais of civil servants making jokes about how they came up with 18 meters and stuff and like that. Even him, he says in that video that the developers and the company sort of convinced the government Government in their own sort of way, um, what's right to use and what isn't right to use. And I believe this is why four years later we are still in the same situation that we're in um, from from Grenfell. And that's because the government don't want to piss off their mates, excuse my French. And that's what I believe is happening here. Their, 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 their pockets have been filled by these developers and these companies and, and these manufacturers for decades. I mean, we uncovered a story where uh, some of you may know a guy called Paul Singer, who um, owns this humongous hedge fund, which has the most amount of shares in Iconic. And straight after Grenfell, he was uh, reshuffling things. And then we also uncovered direct donations from his firm to Boris Johnson and to the Conservative Party. And then you sort of go and ask yourself the question, well, is that the reason why four years after Grenfell, they still don't know how many buildings are covered they don't they, they still don't know what, what exactly is out there and how dangerous it is it's because they don't want to upset their friends that have been filling their pockets for the past god knows how many years i think this, this, is, a, this is an area where we need to start looking at more we, we we've started looking at this and we've started writing to them for as grand for united um sort of you know behind closed doors saying look you know your your memberships are based on ethical and and uh, you know putting people first and all of this type of stuff yet you guys still hiring or, or, or having not hiring sorry but having um organizations like kingspan and Celtics as part as part of your firm as part of your organization where they're sitting around the table with with uh you know parliamentary ministers and 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 and, and, and talking about um you know, reshipping the housing, the construction industry. I mean, Celotex used to have a van driving around uh, saying that, that they now went to government and, and, and they're reshaping the building regulations. So, th so this, 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 this is where I think an area that we need to start maybe focusing on a little bit more. We need to start exposing these dodgy, corrupt relationships that the government has with these organisations, with these developers, um, because that then tells us why... Four years later, you know, Robert Jenrick is on TV. He still doesn't even know what's going on. He has no idea exactly how bad the situation is. And I think he, you know, talking to him at times is, a, for me, a complete waste of time. Sorry for my French again. I just think he's an absolute twat. So, and, and, and I, feel about, I feel about most people in government like that. I, I, I don't trust where anything that they say to you, almost 90 to 95% of it is a lie, Right. They don't know what's going on. They don't know the severity of the situation. And I feel like we need to start exposing and addressing these dodgy relationships that these companies have with our elected government officials, if you will, right? And, 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 and I believe that's why um, the situation hasn't changed much. I mean, if we were talking three months after Grenfell um, and, and we're in the situation that we're in today, that, that, that's, that's understandable. Four years four years i mean just saying it out loud right now to you guys you know kind of turns my stomach a little bit four years since our family died and we all know through the inquiry what was the main cause of this fire and what 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 why and and, and grenfell was a symbol you know that uncovered it's a symbol of injustice in my you know it, it, it's uncovered so much corruption and dodgy doings in this dirty criminal market that's what I think it is. The construction industry and the housing industry, it's, it's, it's all dirty, it's all corrupt, it's all, you know, brown envelopes and this type of stuff. And and I think we need to start we need to start exposing this more. We need to start talking about this more. Obviously, continue doing what we're doing with 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 I mean there's some great work being done out there at the moment, but we really need to start talking about this more because the more pressure we put this government on, uh, we put this government under. They will have nowhere to hide, you know. We have the facts that, the, the, you know, the, I have some research which, which, which I can share with people, but it's, it's, it's all out there for people to see. And it, it's, it's all very, very detailed. You know, these companies and these politicians are filling each other's pockets, and that's why we're in a situation we're in today.
Yes, thank you, um, Karim. I think um, many people will agree with that. Just some comments here in the chat. Um, Dan Richards said, well said, Karim. Um, people are saying justice for Grenfell, um, solidarity with the bereaved survivors of the atrocity um, of the Grenfell T Tower fire. Great to have you at the meeting, Karim. That's from Moira Samuels. Um, and um, Gary White says, thanks all for attending in person, sadly at work, but on behalf of Waterside Park E16, kick up, kick up a stink, stay, stay safe. And again, thanks. Um, I think that you're right. The Grenfell inquiry is kind of lifting a lid on those corrupt um, relationships and the dodgy dealings, as you say. Um, and I think that we do need to make sure that these uh, these things are highlighted. OK, so um, thanks ever so much for that. And we are going to, I Case believe, off. Clapton. Case off. Uh, oh, okay who are protesting against so countryside so much for coming you. hello clapton oh, can you hear us <laughs> uh, i can hear you can you hear me yep absolutely go ahead yes can you see me we're standing yes. outside a uh, countryside building at clapton this is a prize court group and a few others that have come for solidarity um, and I'm now going to take my headphones off and i'm not sure how i turn the screen around though Tell me what's turn the screen. Yep, go ahead. We can hear them. Turn around. Lovely. <coughs> Sounds gone a bit, but I can see lots of people outside the countryside. Sales office. That's great. Thank you, Countryside. Um, that was, thank you, thank you, Clapton, rather. That was a fantastic um, event I can see there. Thank you. I don't know if I actually did that properly. I could see them trying to, try to speak to me to tell me to do something. I was like, I'm going to do Yes, we got you. Thank you ever so much. Um, so uh, we're going to Canary Wharf next, where Ballymore is the main culprit. Um, Canary Wharf, can you hear me? Yep, yep, we can hear you. Go ahead. <coughs> Great. So, uh, guys, we're on the live stream. We're here mostly uh, from Ballymore, outside one of the Ballymore developments, but we've also got folk here uh, protesting against Persimmon. Um, we're here to show our solidarity and stand with the end of the uh, end of cladding and building safety crisis and with the national leasehold campaign um we at new providence wharf had a fire just a few weeks ago and london fire brigade themselves told time. us that uh, that it was very very near miss um and next time we may not be so lucky uh so we cannot allow the government to continue to ask developers to do the right thing it's time for them to legislate to save lives and save livelihoods and the cladding scandal 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 and the cladding scandal, and the cladding scandal, and 
the clotting scandal. End 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 the clotting scandal. That's absolutely Thank fantastic. You. Thank you. Thank you, Kinnear. Um, and um, it's great to see those homemade placards and so many people there Very at your job, at your Thank protest. You. Thank you. Thank you. That's uh, that's amazing. Um, next, we have a video from Sarah Rennie um, from the Cladding Leaseholder Disability Action Group. Um, Dave, run VT, please. Hi, I'm Sarah Rennie, and I'm one of the co-founders of CLADAG, a disability action group uh, for leased holders. I am a wheelchair user, and I'm unable to stand or walk. I am supported by personal assistance uh, to help me at home and at work. I moved into my flat in 2008 after I graduated. I needed somewhere accessible to live, and there wasn't really anywhere I could rent. Um, I adapted my flat, so I've got a wet room, rather than a bath. I've got a hoist that helps me lift out of bed that's attached to the ceiling. So I've really adapted this flat to be my home for life. I also worked so hard in my 20s and 30s to pay off my mortgage because of the degenerating nature of my condition it means that in the next few years I'm going to struggle to work like I have. So I thought now I've got somewhere, a roof over my head and I can start to live more healthily. Um, unfortunately, when things started unravelling, uh, I found out in my building that the lift was not constructed to firefighting standards as we were led to believe. So now the only way for me to get out of my flat on the 13th floor is with an evacuation chair. My RTM company agreed to buy that for me so that I at least got some chance. Now I'm in the minority because most, in fact all of the other members of CLADAG do not have an evacuation plan all their agents and landlords are refusing to communicate or consider one. So deaf people who can't hear the fire alarms, left to their own devices, wheelchair users are just told to stay put in their flats. They seemingly have learned absolutely nothing since Grenfell, where nearly 50% of the people that died were disabled. Learned nothing. And the government is not putting any pressure on agents or landlords to consider disabled leaseholders living in flats like this. There's also the financial situation as well. The remediation costs that are falling to us are obviously exceptionally hard for everyone on limited incomes, but particularly people on live supported by um, disability benefits or state pensions. Disability Rights UK are now leading a call to action supported by 30 disability rights organisations. Now, in this uh, open statement, they are calling on the government to urgently, one, prevent disabled leaseholders to be forced out of their adapted homes, two, provide financial support, and three, provide the aids and equipment needed for us to safely evacuate these unsafe buildings. If you're personally affected, um, or you're a disabled or older person, or know somebody in your building that is, please encourage them to connect with us on Facebook so we can share help and resources. If you'd like to follow Cladag's campaign, we're on Twitter at Cladag. Let's hope people are listening today because enough is enough. Um, that's a very powerful video there from um, Sarah Rennie. Um, just want to highlight some um, responses in the chat um this is interesting from um lydia ysd galliford tri holdings is another billionaire builder that built some plots on the Olymp olympic village and sold off their residential plot they are still responsible for building hospitals and schools all over the uk and i think um it's noticeable that um schools are still being built with flammable cladding um solidarity from southwark defend council housing and solidarity from the rmt union thank you very much very much appreciated 
Um, if you um, are watching this video live, please comment and share um, on your social media and encourage other people to join. Um, I think we're going next to Birmingham City Centre um, for a general protest. Hello, Birmingham. Are you with us? Hi. Hi, yeah. Okay, so we're on live stream now, guys. So, yeah. I'm Jenny from the Birmingham Leaseholder Action Group, and I need to stay close to the speaker. And we're joining here today from Victoria Square with probably over 100 people who have been affected by the cladding and fire safety scandal. And we're joined here together today to uh, protest against the inaction of developers who are not helping to fix the buildings that they made unsafe. Um, so we know that the top six developers made £10 billion in profit since Grenfell, and a third of that profit has come from taxpayer funding, and yet many are not committing to help fix the unsafe buildings they've developed. That includes Red Row, Miller Construction, Galloper Tri, Lenley, Barrett, and Chris Nicholson. You know, the government are not doing enough to hold these companies to account. And that basically means that people are being heavily affected. So, for example, Jim here. Jim, do you want to come over and say how you've been affected by this crisis? Yes, I, I've, <laughs> I've saved for years planning for my retirement. But now I've got a totally uncertain future. Thanks, Jim. And I think Sarah was also going to come over and, and say you know, how this has affected her in terms of her safety in her building. Thanks, Sarah. I've sold a flat that was supposed to be safe and now if there's a fire I don't know how I would get out of life which is just honestly shocking to be honest and I'm a first time buyer bought my flat two years ago it's now worth nothing and I'm facing tens of thousands of pounds to fix it so can everybody here today join <coughs> say, enough is enough let's make our voices heard so developers get it all their way make polluters pay Developers get it all their way, make polluters pay. Developers get it all their way, make polluters pay. Developers get it all their way, make polluters pay. Developers get it all their way, polluters pay. Developers get it all their way, make polluters pay. Developers get it all their way, make polluters pay. Developers get it all their way. Thank you so much for that, Birmingham. Um, that is quite a big turnout you've got there. And it's so good to see you naming and shaming a number of developers on that protest, because really there aren't any innocent developers in this scandal. Um, the next um, live stream we're going to is Chipping Barnet, where uh, their developer is Countryside. Hello, Chipping Barnet. Can you hear me? Hello, this is as in Chipping. We're in yep. Chipping Barnet. We're in Chipping Barnet now. And we're protesting and countryside's offices. They told us you might do it. Countryside. Thank you. Thank you. That is um, wonderful. Uh, bills of up to sixty thousand pounds. That's really 
Incredible. Um, and uh, quite right to be calling out that appalling developer there. Um, and next protest is West Ham. Before we go to those, let me just do a little... Um, say a few of these comments that I'm that I'm getting through in the chat. Um, Katie Kendrick says developers get it all their way, make polluters pay. Chloe Waite says brilliant turnout in Birmingham. Uh, uh, Deborah says red red road, dreadful disgrace. Um, couldn't agree more with that one. So West Ham, um, can you hear me? You are calling out Barrett Holmes today on this protest. <laughs> and you're getting a lot of support by the sounds of it from drivers uh, driving past there um, and some amazing um, homemade placards that um, we could see. Good to see uh, support there from Shaq as well. Um, let's go to Matt now. Um, Matt, um, what an amazing <laughs> series of protests so far. We're really pleased to have you speaking today because we do need to set the record straight. We will not allow firefighters to be scapegoated for the devastating loss of life at Grenfell. Um, we're so grateful for your support in the End Our, Our Cladding Scandal campaign. What needs to happen to make buildings safe and how can we support each other, Matt? Well, thanks, Tanya. And first of all, I just want to pay tribute to everyone involved in all those protests. It's really inspiring to see. Uh, it's a great honour to be here and to listen to the other uh, speakers who so articulately set out the crisis in building safety that we're facing and how that impacts on people's lives. And we're very proud as the Fire Brigade Union to be doing what we can to support. And it is, it is, it's, I just want to pick up something that Karim said earlier. Uh, it used the terms dirty and corrupt. I think the past four years have exposed, frankly, that we live in a completely dirty and corrupt system. It is absolutely staggering that in one of the richest countries in the world, people can die on the scale that they did at Grenfell. And also tens of thousands of people remain living in unsafe homes 
and the government moves at snail's pace to address or to avoid the issue. It is, it is and should be a national scandal. And you know, one thing we've discussed in, in our union is uh, what, how this happened. We use the term deregulation, but what do we mean by that? Firstly, I think for decades we have had commitment by central government, and these are the ministers, the people who have been referred to uh, earlier, who are committed to reducing what they call burdens on business, uh, and they mean reducing regulations. So they say uh, they've given instructions to civil servants, if you want to propose a regulation, you've got to get rid of another regulation. So there's an ideological commitment to it. Secondly, you have, uh, and again, this has been explained earlier, specific lobbying by corporate interests about particular aspects of regulation, particularly construction, developers, and so on. Uh, and then thirdly, in individual projects, such as we see in all the cases you've just pointed out, uh, the cost-cutting drive to boost profits by developers and corporations. We, with the background to that, we've got ministers, prime ministers talk about the burden of red tape. We had a prime minister who talked about the need to slay the monster of red tape. This is the, the, the political culture that we're operating uh, within. And so you end up with a system where every aspect of development is corrupted by that whole approach. So whether it's the products that are being used in construction, the planning arrangements, the research into buildings and new fire risks, the testing regime, the inspection regime, the enforcement regime, and then also uh, for us also the emergency response. In every single element of those, the governments over decades have reduced systems that used to be in place, uh, whereby when Grenfell Tower was built, it was built as a safe building. It has been made unsafe subsequently, and we need to look at why that uh, has happened. Uh, we, we've had uh, government ministers, for example, who have told, including within the past 10 years, who have told the Fire and Rescue Service in terms of its inspection regime to go easy on businesses when they do fire safety inspections. At the same time, of course, they're slashing the number of fire safety inspectors that exist in the Fire and Rescue Service. So in terms of, of it is a, a national scandal. And I, it's fantastic to see people uh, bringing this to, to the attention of the public. Uh, but it's a hard fight, and I think we need to work together. I think we need to avoid any divide and rule. We've got uh, people in power who are very adept at playing divide and rule, who, for example, want to play off firefighters against the community at Grenfell. To be clear, our union is totally committed to supporting the community at Grenfell. Uh, we walk on the, the walks when we were having them physically with T-shirts saying, decent, safe homes for all. That's the approach that we take uh, as a union. We need to work together. Uh, residents, tenants, trade unions to build a movement that challenges what is going on that says actually we're not allowing people to be scapegoated and we are not allowing tenants and leaseholders to pay the price for corporate failure. Those burdens need to be passed back to those who created the problems, that is the government who uh, created the regulatory regime and the corporations who make millions and indeed billions in profits over the decades out of these developments. That's the approach that we need to take. Uh, solidarity from us, from the Fire Brigade Union, to all those protesters, and, and we stand uh, with all those involved, and hopefully we can work together to create that level of political pressure that is needed. Um, Matt, that's so, uh, so brilliant. Thank you so much for that, and solidarity to all firefighters. Um, <laughs> We know that you're on the front line and um, you have to deal with some appalling practices in the construction industry. Um, and it really isn't right that your uh, members should be put at risk because of the, um, the, the need for developers to maximise their profits, as, uh, as Jenny said earlier. Um, just a few comments in the chat before we go to Brighton. Um, so Jeremy Chopra says, well done, West Ham. Just looking at the scale of the building works in Barking, West Ham, Canning Town areas and how those new builds could also be unsafe is scary. And Keith, Kath Chapman says, Persimmon Homes and their management agent are a disgrace. All developers should be brought to task and stop withholding vital information. That is so important. Um, 
that's so important, Kath. Um, all of this is done very much behind closed doors. Um, Carolina says free, freeholders take control of the buildings that you own and built with many defectives. Pay for your mistakes. Absolutely right. Um, and uh, Jeanette Walsh uh, says solidarity with firefighters at my daughter's property, landlord and a charity only just removed furniture they had provided and she's had for five years and wasn't fireproof. Sarah Shrimpton says, thanks so much, Matt, brilliantly put. Leon James said, FBU save lives, greed and profit kills. Um, I could go on, but uh, we need to go to the next uh, protest. Keep sharing your comments and sharing the stream, please, um, on social media. Um, we're going to Brighton next, who are uh, protesting at Barrett Homes. Brighton, are you with us? I think the sound's a bit iffy there at Brighton. Um, I think you actually might be muted. Uh, oh, there we go. 500, 600 residents, instead of just complaining and worrying about this, we've organised ourselves into a residents association and we're going to confront the government, we're going to confront Paris Homes, and we're going to take on our own managing agents. Make Paris pay to take the back away. 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 Good chanting going on here, Brian. Uh, <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you, um, Brighton. Um, make Barrett pay to take the cladding away. That's a, a really great chant. And um, it's great to see so many people out um today in Brighton. Uh, just a comment from Sean O'Regan, lessons not learnt from fire at Lackanel House in Southwark. Now the sister block Marie Curie, um, leaseholders and tenants will have to move out for at least a year while work is done. Work that was completed in Lackanel House in 2016. It's shocking. Absolutely. We must remember that the building safety crisis affects council tenants and residents as well as leaseholders um in private blocks um we now uh can go to hayes i Ken, think where they are where they are protesting outside ballymore Welcome, High Point Village in Hayes, Ballymore, Tempe, Notting Hill, Genesis. We say they pay. Massive turnout today. Local councillors, local MP. Ballymore must pay. Enough is enough. 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 En
again, just coming enough, up to John McDonnell, who represents us today, for giving us the support. Enough, Barry Moore has paid. Hi, John. Enough, thank you very much for coming. Barry Moore has paid. I'm here with my constituents in Hayes, their residents on the Ballymore, well, High Point Village, it's called. They're now in a enough, situation, enough. like many others, like we're across the country, enough, where they're living enough. in a place to be unsafe enough, conditions, enough. flooding risk, in addition to that, other enough, health enough. and safety thoughts that have been found. Enough, the government is not going to be able to resolve the situation, but in addition to that, Ballymore, who caused the problem, the developers who made the problem, Missing. are now landing my constituents with huge bills. It's unacceptable. People are living here trapped in unsafe unable to move on. We need the developers to pay, to pay for basically the Missing. costs that they're trying to load up on my constituents. And we need the government to intervene to make sure that happens. Boris Johnson promised us redress. We need that promise fulfilled. The developers have to pay. Super. Thank you, John. Signing off from Hayes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hayes. Um, that's fantastic. It seemed like you had a lot of people there. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we saw it... Um, sideways on uh but we did see uh quite a lot of people um and your uh local mp who appeared on the stream as well um so um our last protest is at manchester town hall um where len lease are redeveloping the town hall um hello again manchester Hi Tanya, so as you can see behind me, hopefully in the shot, we've got the Manchester Town Hall under scaffolding. This has been given to lend lease as a contract despite the efforts of many Green Quarter residents who have fought long and hard to uh, fight this contract um, and make sure that lend lease didn't get it. They wrote to the council, they protested over many, many months about their situation. They had the same cladding as um, Grenfell Tower and now they've still failed their EWS1. So I'm going to show you the crowd here. They're going to start some chanting for you. And I just want to stress it's not just Len Lease. We've got many, many different leaseholders here from all over Manchester. We've got a really good crowd. We've had some really good media coverage. But ultimately, these guys are the worst hit. They've already had four years of this. They've had their cladding removed and now their building still isn't safe. And they're probably looking like they're having to pay for it. No one's offered to pay. Lease, lo lease, Len Lease have been ignoring them. Yes, thank you ever so much, Claire. That's a great, great protest. And thanks for doing those two in Manchester for us. It seems like you have a lot of people there. And um, I understand the BBC were threatening to come down to um, yeah. cover it. We've got several reporters, as you can see. Uh, we've got, we've had media here. We've got cameras. We've got BBC, both national and regional. As you can see, there's leaseholders here telling their own stories. And it's a perfect day for it. Unusually good weather for Manchester, which is known as the rainy city. And this is Stephen Squires here, who was the organiser from the Green Quarter that put it all together. We've also got Rebecca from Manchester Gladiators. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you ever so much, Claire. Um, no problem. 
I really hope we get to see that today. BBC, do do show that today on your uh, national news uh, because that um, would show that you are actually interested in a story that affects millions of people's lives. Um, so we'd love to see that on the national news. Okay, thank you uh, from Manchester. Um, what about um, what about that solidarity we saw today from across the country, um, Jenny? What are the next next steps in in building this movement? And any comments on what you've seen today? Yeah, well, I mean, from a, an end cutting scandal perspective, and also just for me as a you know as a leaseholder, I just want to say a huge thank you for everyone that's gone out today. Um, you know, it's giving up your Saturdays. It is a glorious day most, in, across most of the country. So at least it's uh, not having people stuck in the rain. But this is literally, this is what's so important about this campaign. It's the people standing up for themselves and calling out both developers, calling out the government, engaging MPs, engaging councillors. That is what's so important. What we've been working on, you know, for the last year or so has been a case of putting pressure on the government to increase. And I, I think... One thing to remember is that we are pushing this in the right direction. I know as a leaseholder in a building where we've got a lot of unfunded work that needs to be done, that it can sometimes feel as if there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but I want to remind everyone how far this campaign and all of you guys have helped us push this. The government have now got over £5 billion on the table. It's not enough. Everyone knows it's not enough, but it's a lot more than we started with. And we will absolutely not keep uh, we will, will not stop until that amount is going to cover everybody's buildings. Um, and I think one other thing just to point out that there, there may be people listening today that have developers who have gone, uh, you know, they've dissolved themselves like at my building. We are not saying that this is just something that developers need to do. Um, as uh, Matt was alluding to, and, and also um, Kareem, one of the main problems that sort of caused us all to be in this situation is over decades, the government has deregulated the building industry. So as much as Robert Jenrick said to me to, yesterday at the answer to my question, um, you know, go to the developer, the developer needs to sort it. The government do have a responsibility to step in and help sort this problem out because not just the Conservatives, but across lots of different governments over the last uh, several decades, the uh, deregulation of this construction industry and the development industry has allowed buildings to be signed off as safe when they were not. And that is due to the government regulation. And so we will not stop pushing both developers and government to stand up and, and take responsibility for what they've caused. Um, and obviously everybody agrees, whether it's the select committee for housing communities, local government, whether it's actually Boris Johnson standing up in Parliament saying that he doesn't believe leaseholders should pay. Nobody thinks it's right that we are having to foot the bill for this mess and we will not stop fighting until it's made certain that we will uh, we will be absolved from from having to pay. So thank you so much for everyone that's that's come out today. And please remember that there is the big rally in London on the 15th of July as well. So please uh, show your support and join us then as well. That's um, absolutely brilliant. Thank you, um, Jenny. Um, Richard Nicholson said, brilliant, such inspiration for the protest in July. The National Leasehold Campaign, abolish leasehold, say we're taking these protests to London on the 15th of July. Two massive campaigns are uniting uh, together. And Chloe says, fantastic, Jenny. Um, let's go to you now, Matt. Um, your, your closing thoughts? Well, I'll just echo what Jenny said. I think it's fantastic to see all those people out uh, protesting, coming together on a Saturday afternoon to to get their points across and building that unity. And I think building the, the the links between the different groups of campaigners is fantastic. And yeah, we've got immediate challenges about the the issues uh, facing uh, leaseholders, as as Jenny's just outlined. But also, we, we've got a bigger thing. We need to create a system where we can have confidence that the buildings that are being built are meeting safety standards that we can have actual confidence in. Mm -hmm. And that, mean, that means a complete change of the, the, the regulatory regime that we're, we're uh, facing today. Uh, that's a big, big uh, political challenge. But uh, as we approach the fourth anniversary of Grenfell, I think we should redouble our efforts to say that that's what we're setting out to do and that's what we will eventually achieve. Um, thank you so much, um, Matt, and look forward to working with you <clears throat> in uh, in future as well. Um, Karim from um, 
the Grenfell United campaign has had to go back to his son's football match. So thank you ever so much, Karim, for attending. And I'd just like to finally say thanks and solidarity goes out to all the local groups who worked so hard to make this such a successful day of action, to UK Cladding Action Group, to CLADAG, the FBU and the Developer Showroom Protest Group who initiated this day of action, Today, through our collective organising, we've made the government and the developers sit up and listen. This is There is an opportunity to carry on the discussion at the next Homes for All general meeting next Saturday, the 12th of June. Uh, so details should be in the chat. And please check out the UK Cladding Action Group and End Our Cladding Scandal websites and Facebook pages. And as Jenny said, it's vitally important that people publicise and attend the rally on the 15th of, uh, of July in London, organised by UK Cladding Action and others. Um, we have a growing movement with one very clear aim, make our buildings safe. Join us to hold the government and developers to account for the devastation of the health and housing crisis and join us to make developers pay. Uh, together, we are powerful. Let's get on with that work. Thank you.